Okay, good morning. Well, first of all, I'd like to applaud you for being able to be here so early um, after a party like last night. <laughs> that shows a lot of determination. Uh, my name is Annie Lai. I'm with Huawei IT Product Line. And today with my two colleagues, uh, Zhang Yu and Ayo, we're going to um, talk to you about Huawei Public Cloud. And um, so, as you know that Huawei, we have been serving our carrier customers for the last 20 plus years. And for the last 12 plus years, we've been helping carriers build data centers all the way from L1 infrastructure to application services. And um, so um, we built actually over 400 data centers all over the world, including the world's largest data center, China Mobile, and, which is 600,000 square meters. And um, I don't know why this thing keeps going back. Here. And, um, and then also f for the, this is interesting. Why is this going back? So for the last, um, <laughs> this is like confusing me. Okay, so we've been, we've been building data centers all this time, and then also for the last five years, we've been helping our carrier customers build uh, private cloud, public cloud. And um, yesterday I had a session about three telco story to um, OpenStack. One of the use cases that I talked about was uh, carrier enabled public cloud. And um, so carriers are actually very interested in um, becoming a a cloud service provider for their region. I know some of you might think that, oh, carrier probably don't have a chance in U.S., right? Because U.S. market is very tough. You got the AWS, you have Amazon, you have Google and Azure. And, uh, but outside of U.S., they, because of the data sovereignty problems and also a lot of uh, carriers are backed by the government and they have access to their customers. So they actually they have uh, quite a bit of a chance of being their de facto public cloud service provider. So we've been helping them build public clouds. Um, our flagship public cloud was uh, Singapore Star Hub serving Singapore government as well as Singapore citizens. And we started that project over four years ago. And because that was our first time, we did a public cloud deployment. So we partnered with Singapore Star Hub. And um, so we both were learning at the same time. Our, we have a group of team pe uh, people help Singapore Star Hub operate the public cloud. And we learned a lot. And after that, we had a lot of RFPs, RFIs, re requesting Huawei help them build public clouds. And however, for us to, in order to become expert, and in US there's this phrase called, you have to eat your own dog food or you have to take your own medicine, right? In order to be an expert, we have to be able to operate uh, a public cloud ourselves. So that's why we decided to um, start um, Huawei Public Cloud, but focusing in China only, because we want to you know, really become the expert in operating uh, a public cloud. So we use China as our marketplace because we know the market very well. And outside of China, uh, we definitely don't want to compete against our carrier customers, so we partner with carrier customers. And that's our strategy. And for Huawei Public Cloud, we call it Huawei Cloud Services, HWS. And we just launched that this year, this summer. And um, the positioning is, is enterprise-focused, enterprise-grade public cloud, focusing on infrastructure as a service plus type of services, targeting enterprise customers, government agencies, as well as startups, SMEs. And um, um, this whole public cloud is running on Huawei cloud platform, Fusion Sphere. And this year, in the middle of this year, we actually, Fusion Sphere passed the um, OpenStack interoperability testing. So actually, we have acquired OpenStack empowered local license. And that means um, our Fusion Sphere is OpenStack pure. And um, open, uh, Fusion Sphere is a crown jewel. It's a core investment for Huawei. And because we know that you know, for our customers to deploy private cloud, public cloud, they need a large scaled, you know, highly scalable, interoperable um, cloud platform. So we double down on OpenStack. We have globally, we have over five R&D centers. We have two in China, Chengdu, Xi'an, and one in uh, Israel, and two, uh, one in Silicon Valley, US, and one in Canada. All together, we have over 2,000 engineers so working with the OpenStack community. And um, so, you know, even though it's, we are only serving the China market, but it's a large market. How, who knows how many people, what's the population size of China? 
is 1.4 billion population. And just the fact that um, China actually has 10% of the global developer community, which amounts to 1.9 million developers. And China's got the second highest um, open set developers. And Beijing itself is the highest open set developer city. So we have a, a lot of developers who can really benefit from this um, Huawei um, public cloud. And um, this is such a huge size market, there's no way we can serve the market with only one data center. So we actually have um, designated 17 data centers all over China running this one, um, across in seven regions, running this Huawei public cloud. And also from a networking standpoint, we uh, picked the uh, three-tier networking topology. And uh, so for more condensed, concentrated cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, et cetera, um, we call them the first tier you know, network um, you know, region. And then we have second tier network region. These are medium sized cities. And the third tiers are somewhere further. And we use those regions for, you know, disaster recovery, backup, that kind of stuff, where they do not require a lot of uh, network speed. And um, all the data centers are at least T3 or T4. So in the data center, they have a class, T1 type of data center, T2, T3, T4. And the, that definition is based on the availability that offers. So for T3, T4 type of data center, they offer at least three to four nice availabilities. And if you're interested, you can go to www.hwclouds.com. Unfortunately, it's in Chinese, but I think for Japanese audience, I think you might be able to read it. It's kan in kanji, right? So uh, you go there, um, you can see, you can choose services, product, um, and also uh, we included some of the customer use cases that you can check out. And this is the portfolio, and um, like I said earlier, we focus on infrastructure as a service plus. In other words, you know, we, um, the services that we're offering is based is about like it's for um, you know compute storage network, and then also um, we have an environment pass like environment to enable developers and ISVs, and then um, in addition we included security and management. And over time, we will keep evolving, we'll keep adding new services. And uh, for the customers, um, we have been very lucky. We've gotten pretty good traction. We have gotten all these customers. These are just some examples, and we have additional customers that are not listed, and they're more representative. And um, you know, the, the verticals that we consider low-hanging fruits are large enterprises, public sectors, financial services, media entertainment, and large, and then small um, you know, internet startup companies. And so with that, um, I'm going to um, invite our architect, Zhang Yu, who uh, was deeply involved in the design and the deployment of Huawei Public Cloud. And he's going to share with you his experience with um, designing and deploying Huawei Public Cloud. So, uh, so uh, here I will show you some uh, technical points about uh, Huawei Public Cloud. Okay. Right, so, which part into the to 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 slide? Just use the keyboard. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, in general, we start our work from the upstream open source, open stack. Okay. So first, I want to say thank you to the community to provide such a great open source project, because of we have the open stack, we can start our work on a very high level start point. Okay, but today, uh, what I want to share is what more we need based on the open source, open stack itself. Okay, so let's uh, look at this list. This is what we have from the community. Okay, so we have many, many good code. Okay, from many, many star smart guys, and then uh, open stack, upstream open stack provide many modules for building up a powerful system. Okay, so we have rich functions and we have open APIs. So that's great. But this is not all of the things we need to build a public cloud. We need something else. So here we provide a brief list for the components, including both hardware and software, which we use, we need to build up an end-to-end -end public cloud solution. Okay. So uh, just from the technical point of view, okay, here. So we will not uh, talking about the marketing team and, and the operating team, business team, things. No, we just focus on the technical itself. Okay. 
So at least we need data center infrastructure, right? So we need our uh, physical devices. And then we have virtualization and the software defined, for software design, software storage, software defined networking, and so on. Okay. So uh, beyond the service part, so we need a business supporting system to manage the service catalog to show how many services we can provide. Okay. We need account management. We need order management, billing, and so on. And for the operating support system part, so we need our deploy system, we need our upgrading, monitoring, logging, alarming notification, and so on. So many things for uh, operation, okay. So we need a portal, right? Because uh, although we can provide APIs out to the uh, high level advanced user who can write some program, we also need to provide a portal for the entry level users, okay. So, uh, and beyond that, uh, we need some uh, higher level uh, uh, services, uh, components. For example, we need the software to build up uh, pass level services, or even SaaS level services, and so on. Okay, so beyond the components, we still have more requirements for the system, okay. So, uh, since the, it is a public cloud service, so the reliability, Availability, performance, scalability, easy to maintain, security, low cost, user friendly. So we can have a long list of such top priority requirements, in fact. So it's very hard for us to, to judge whether this is more important than the, than the others. Okay, so all of the points shown here on this page are really important. We should think about that. So uh, I think, frankly, we have a gap between the open source, upstream source code, and end-to-end uh, -end public service. Okay, we need, a, we need to overcome this gap. So this is just what we do when designing, deploying, and operating the uh, Huawei public cloud. We are just uh, trying our best to overcome this gap. So uh, this is a high-level architecture of Huawei public cloud, okay? So we can see that uh, OpenStack is, in fact, the kernel part of the cloud platform, okay? We use OpenStack to manage the virtualization and software-defined uh, components. And then under that, we have our hardware, our data center infrastructure. That's okay. And beyond OpenStack, beyond the cloud platform uh, module, we still have cloud service and the cloud BSS system, okay. So here cloud, <coughs> uh, cloud service is used to wrap up some low-level API, some low-level item uh, functions provided by OpenStack to some higher-level service, combined API operations uh, exposed to the end user. Okay, so this is why we introduce uh, cloud service. Okay, so for cloud BSS, uh, this is just for the uh, business things, for example, the uh, order management, the service catalog, the billing, and so on, okay. So, uh, on top of all of the modules, we have console, okay. We have two consoles, in fact. One is for the end, uh, end pod user, so just like what Annie has shown in the snapshot, okay. And also, we have to provide a administrator-oriented uh, console, okay. So, this is for the uh, administrate of the system, okay. So, for all of the system, we will have an end-to-end -end cloud OSS system. Okay, so this is for the uh, operation and the maintenance team. Okay, so uh, we will talk about some challenges when building up such a system. Okay, so we have many challenges, but I, uh, I will not cover all of them because we have limited time. Okay, so here I will just uh, talk about some of them, which I think is very interesting, okay. So the first is reliability, okay. Because this is a service provided to public, so we expect that the service itself can be used every day, every hour, or even every minute, every second. It, it must be reliable, okay. And then scalability, okay. So this is a public cloud. We can start it from a not very large scale, but it must be scalable, okay, because our business is increasing. And the third is uh, easy to maintain, okay. So because for public cloud, the, the price, the price of unit service is very critical. 
because there are so many service providers in this domain. Okay, so we must be cheap. The service should be good, but the price should be cheap. Okay, so how to make the price too cheap? We should cut down all packs at first. Okay, so easy to maintain is very, very important to the cost cut down. So for the reliability part, uh, we think about many things, but the most critical thing here is that we should use a component to uh, we should use a component which we are most familiar with to combine the system. Okay. For example, for hypervisor, for storage, for networking, for each component of the system, you should choose the most familiar component you have. Okay. For example, for for example, for virtualization, we just use a product, the Fusion Compute uh, Enterprise Level Virtualization uh, Management uh, Suits uh, provide, uh, provided by Huawei itself. Okay, because this is our product, we know it very well. If things go wrong, we can fix the bug. We can echo the problem at the first time. Okay, so this is the reason we use it. So similar case in the storage part. Okay. We do not use third-party open source uh, software-defined uh, storage uh, software. We just use Fusion Storage, which is also a product provided by Huawei. Okay, we know it. This is the most critical reason we use it. We know it. Okay. So uh, I'm not here to make some advisement for our products. This is just some suggestion. If one day you want to build up a system for your own, you should keep in your mind that I think to use something you are familiar with is really valuable. Okay, for the scalability thing, okay. Uh, in fact, I think most people here uh, know some truth that the scalability of a single OpenStack deployment is limited, okay. So we cannot increase a single OpenStack deployment to a very, very large scale, it's, it's very hard, okay. Uh, but the scalability itself is essential. Then how to address this problem? We just use the OpenStack cascading technology created by Huawei itself. And also we have contributed this technique to the community. So we have a open source project named as TreeCircle, okay. So TreeCircle is a OpenStack cascading uh, solution. So which is used to aggregate a number of OpenStack deployments into one unified logical resource pool to provide a large uh, uh, logical uh, resource uh, pool to the end user. Okay, so uh, by using such a uh, solution, so uh, we can have some trade-off. Okay, so the scale of a single OpenStack deployment should not be too large. There is no necessary reason for that. Okay, so the, the scale can be just maybe so 500 physical servers uh, for each single OpenStack deployments. Okay, but we can have many, many such kind of deployments, and we use OpenStack cascading to aggregate all of them. Okay. Another problem for OpenStack scalability is uh, networking. Okay, the networking part. Uh, if you are familiar with neutral, you will know that in the natural born upstream uh, neutral architecture, there is a component means uh, uh, named as network node. Okay, so uh, we use a network node to do L3 level traffic forwarding, and we use that to provide DLCP and other network services. Okay, but such kind of L3 level node itself is in fact a problem. Okay. Especially in large-scale deployments, the network node itself will introduce the first, the performance bottleneck, and second, single point of failure. Okay. So in Huawei public cloud solution, we just remove the network node here. We use distributed uh, virtual network solution. So for distributed network, we use DVR. Okay. So by my understanding, we are the, uh, at least we are one of the first teams to use DVR in production level environment, and we believe that it is usable. Okay, maybe we need some uh, uh, some uh, consolidation. We need to improve it to fix some bug, but it is usable. Okay, so beyond DVR, we also use distributed DHCP. Okay, so there is no uh, consolidated DHCP agent on the network node. No, 
we just distribute the DLCP mechanism to each of the compute nodes so that the DLCP service on each node only serve the DLCP request uh, sent out on this or within the scope of this compute node. Okay. So currently, DLCP agent uh, distributed uh, DLCP is not a feature in upstream OpenStack. But Huawei is now working hard to contributing this feature back to the community. And uh, we plan to land the distributed DLCP feature in Metaka release. OK, so uh, <clears throat> for the easy to maintain part, so we provide many components in our uh, HWS system to make the system more, uh, more understandable. Okay, so it's, it should be understandable because it's so complicated. Okay, we have thousands of servers, we have thousands of various type of components, software, hardware. Okay, the system itself must be understandable. Okay, so how to be understandable? We have to introduce some tools, some tools here. So the first is that we use Zabbix to monitor the performance of the system, including both the hardware and also the a critical component of OpenStack itself. For example, we use Zabbix to monitor the CPU utilization, the memory utilization of each of the OpenStack components. For example, NOAA API, NOAA conductor, NOAA scheduler, sender API, and so on. Okay. And also, log. Log is always a very important topic to discuss. Okay. So every day we are talking about big data. Okay. So what data is big? The log. The log is a very, very large data side, okay? So by using such kind of ERK solution to collect all of the log data into your uh, data management system, you can do many analysis based on the log data and you can understand the status of the system very well, okay? So <clears throat> based on the ERK solution, we provide a, a status analysis component, which is just used to automatically analyze the content provided by ERK, especially the Elasticsearch uh, cluster, to understand whether or not the OpenStack cluster is working well. Okay, so this is just uh, something we do for this uh, system. Okay. And uh, also, we have automatic testing trigger. Okay. So uh, by using this, uh, by, by involving such kind of a trigger, we just periodically issue some API calls to the system to see whether or not the service is still usable. Okay, for example, we periodically uh, and automatically create VM to see whether the NOAA service is still usable. Okay, so this is some trick to understand the functional correctivity, the functional correctness of the system. Okay, so uh, next I will transfer the time to my, uh, yeah, yeah, to Aya. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, before I bring out Aya, I just want to make a comment that, as you know, that you know the current OpenStack release is really not enough to you know to operate such a large scale public cloud. So that's why Huawei ha we have to add in a lot of extensions and to make it work. It, it is our goal to up eventually upstream, uh, upstream all of these features, advanced features and functionalities. And especially for TriCircle project, um, you know, it, it is a large scale project. We'd like to invite you guys to come join us and make. Tricircle is success, uh, so everybody else can benefit from you know our work. And so after um, after John, I would like to um, invite our CTO from Israel and. Um, Aya, Aya is going to come out and talk to you a, about a, a lot of exciting projects that he's working on. Hopefully with all these projects that he can make Huawei Public Cloud a lot more competitive and a lot more um, you know, useful for our customers. Aya. Thank you, Annie. Okay, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is still going in the wrong direction. Um, so first of all, it's very important to note, no, not many people know this, but Huawei is really active in the community. And we're not just using OpenStack, we are actively trying to contribute to all the things that we're learning in the cl uh, public cloud uh, uh, experiences and as well as in the private cloud uh, distribution that we have. So up until now, we've been uh, showing you that we've uh, contributed Bugs, bug fixes, we found bug, fixed them, uh, performance improvements, pr improvements to DVR, and as uh, Zhang Yu mentioned, uh, we're also uh, contributing back the distributed DHCP based on DVR uh, technology. 
but in fact, we're doing a lot more of that. So with a quick show of hands, how many of you have heard of Project Courier? Yeah, nice, keep your hands up. How many have heard of Dragonflow, of Tricircle before coming here today? Okay, what maybe you do not know is that all of these projects were initiated by Huawei, some of them with, uh, uh, in collaboration with other companies like Midokura, some of them alone. In addition, we're, uh, we pushed the service function chaining functionality into Neutron. Um, in this summit, we're launching a new project called Smog, um, uh, which is focused on data protection. And you're going to hear soon about, uh, not today, but uh, you can expect to hear more about in a hybrid, hybrid cloud project that we're going to push. And all of this is, of course, upstream open source. So, as you can understand, we focus on uh, upstream. We are committed to leading innovation in the community um, to drive OpenStack to become an enterprise-grade solution upstream and to make sure that everything you need is under the OpenStack umbrella. So, what I'm going to focus in the rest of this session is on uh, neutron networking. So as Zhang Yu mentioned, networking is uh, still mostly an unsolved problem in OpenStack. There are lots of uh, issues there with the reference implementation, and what we want to do is make the reference implementation usable and scalable. So to do this, we've introduced Project Dragonflow. And what is Dragonflow? Dragonflow is an SDN controller. And now you may be thinking, and if you're not thinking this, you should be thinking it, why the hell do we need yet another SDN controller? There are so many in the open source. Well, there are two major differences between, a, between Dragonflow and any other SDN controller that you're familiar with. The first, of, the first one is that, is that it is totally developed under OpenStack, and it is the only SDN controller that is being developed under OpenStack. But that is not a compelling enough reason to... Uh, develop a new um, SDN controller. The second major difference is that all the other SDN controllers you're familiar with decided to build a distributed database by themselves to make it cluster, uh, to, to build it so that uh, the clustering, the HA mechanism, everything is built in to the SDN controller. Once they do that, they're stuck with it. Now, such an effort is a three to five year effort to make it enterprise grade. With uh, Dragonflow, what we've decided to do is say, hell no, that's someone else's problem, right? They've already done this. We'll just make the database pluggable, right? And we will uh, reuse other people's work, like Cassandra, like um, um, RamCloud, etc. And all we need to focus on is the networking parts. Um, when Zhang Yu mentioned before that ease of maintenance is critical to keep the OPEX down, this is it. And we will, I will touch upon this uh, a little more. So Dragonflow is a distributed SDN controller. Uh, the SDN controller itself runs on the compute nodes, as you can see, in a distributed manner. And if we take a look a little under the hood, then you see that we have the pluggable database layer. We already have support for RethinkDB, RamCloud, and etcd. And adding a driver for another pluggable database is a one-day work. It's really simple. Um, in addition, you can see that we have the application layer here. So today, Dragonflow supports most of the Neutron functionality. We have layer two support, distributed layer three support, uh, distributed DHCP, and I will touch upon that uh, a little more later. And we have a lot of um, um, plans for more features. We initiated Dragonflow a little more than a year ago. We presented it in, uh, in uh, the Paris uh, the Paris Summit, and today it's already being used in, uh, in uh, production environments, and our target is to get into the Huawei public cloud soon. So, from the feature point of view, as I mentioned, we support uh, the Layer 2 functionality, so Layer 2 Core API, IPv4, IPv6, the major tunneling protocols, um, of course, distributed uh, Layer 3 virtual router, Distributed DHCP, when I said ease of maintenance, right? Distributed DHCP is less than 400 lines of code to develop. It took us one day to get the first version, 
was 300 lines of code, debugging, testing, etc. It now works 400 lines of code. That is ease of maintenance, okay? Whole of Dragonflow, less than 3,000 lines of code. All of this functionality in so little code, that is less than DVR itself, which is a single feature. Um, as I mentioned, pluggable distributed databases and selective database distribution, maybe I will get to that if I have time. Um, so on the roadmap, uh, we want reactive database distribution. What you need to understand is that the da database is a critical um, factor in any SDN controller. It really is the point which determines your scalability because of two reasons, right? The database, what it does, it's, it uh, distributes all the uh, network topology to the compute nodes. So the determining on how, how fast it is to uh, spread all this information to all the compute nodes determines your scalability. In addition, the less data that you need to distribute to each compute node, the more nodes you can uh, scale to. So if you have a reactive database distribution, that means that the compute nodes only go to the database when they need and ask for the information and not um, proactively getting the information all the time from the database like other distributed uh, uh, SDN controllers, then we can scale a lot more. Uh, container support, as I said, we're leading career uh, project. Of course, we're going to support containers in Dragonflow. Um, service chaining support, distributed DNAT and SNAT. Today, this is uh, uh, being worked on already and uh, offloading to hardware components to get better performance. Okay, so as I said, we took us one, one day to get the first version of uh, the distributed DHCP. Um, so why do we even need to distribute DHCP? Well, first thing to understand is there is no dynamic uh, allocation of IPs in OpenStack using DHCP. Neutron is the IP address manager. Neutron decides the IP address and the MAC address of every virtual machine in your environment. So then, all that we need to do is push this information into the virtual machines. We don't need the DHCP server. Now, how does DHCP work without Dragonflow? Well, for every virtual network that you have, Neutron sets up a DHCP server on the network node. This means that if I have 100 tenants with an average of 10 subnets per tenant, I have 1,000 DHCP servers running in my environment. If we use the uh, DVR architecture to distribute, we actually make the problem worse because we now, although we're distributed, we have a lot more servers, uh, DHCP servers in our environment. So we said, well, this is a problem that goes straight to maintenance, to ease of, to ease of use and increases our OPEX, how do we solve this? So we have, on the right-hand side, you can see uh, the general DHCP uh, protocol, and on the left-hand side, you can see uh, how Dragonflow takes care of that. So basically, what we do is introduce a flow into OVS that hijacks DHCP requests locally, sends them to a DHCP uh, application in Dragonflow, which creates a DHCP response, returns that uh, to the virtual machine locally, and no network, uh, no uh, traffic over the network, right? This is all local on your computer. Because the database distributed the topology to Dragonflow, then uh, we already have all the information that we need. Um, how am I with time? Okay, I still have a few more minutes. I already covered uh, uh, pluggable databases. I will just mention that building a database is something that takes years, right? To stabilize, to get a clustered system right, takes a long time. So, uh, as I said, we made it pluggable, and what I would like to talk about is selective distribution. Um, really, in order to scale, and this is a very important point, you need to limit the amount of data that you distribute to all the compute nodes. If I want to scale to 10,000 physical servers, even if I need to distribute one megabyte to each one of them, if I need to continuously do this, this takes a long time. And it's a big, uh, it's big pressure on your network. So instead, what we want to do is limit the amount of data that we distribute. So in this use case, you can see that I have two compute nodes running virtual machines whose network topology has no uh, connection with each other, right? VM1 and VM2 are on one network. VM3 and 4 are on a different network. 
This means that compute node one really does not need to know about the network topology on the right side and vice versa. Compute node two does not need to know um, about the network topology on the left side. So this is selective distribution. What we do is uh, we have a publish subscribe model in the database and that's why uh, I don't know if you noticed we support RethinkDB um, and we just subscribe on the tenant information that, uh, that uh, complies with the virtual machines that we're running. In this way, we're limiting the amount of data that we need to distribute to each compute node and making the solution more scalable. And last point, uh, of course, containers. So uh, you've heard of Courier. Courier uh, is a project which is trying to uh, standardize container networking in a, in a uh, hybrid environment. So what does a hybrid environment mean? It means the, yeah, exactly. Okay, it means the ability to run uh, Docker containers inside a virtual machine alongside uh, regular virtual machines that are uh, serving our workloads. And the problem is that setting up the networking on the right side for the containers that are nested is difficult. Now they're nested there because of security reasons. No one in their right minds today is uh, uh, deploying containers on bare metal. They're doing it on per-tenant virtual machines. Okay, so we still have the problem, how do we get IP addresses, how do we manage the network topology for those containers inside, and, uh, and they can reside in different subnets, etc. So Courier set out to uh, standardize this. There are other projects that are uh, doing this, like Flannel, Weave, etc., but we want all of them to comply with the Neutron network um, uh, modeling because it's already there and it uh, gives us a unified way of managing the network. And Dragonflow uh, is going to be one of the first uh, network solutions that supports Courier in this way. And I think that is it. Thank you. Questions? Thank yeah, so as you can see, um, you know, running such a large scale public cloud, Huawei, we are becoming the user of OpenStack. So it is helping us push OpenStack. It's helping us to push Huawei to be more innovative. And um, so we need all of these projects in order to make uh, such a large scale uh, public cloud working properly. And so we need your help. Um, you know, all these projects we can't do alone. So we'd like to invite you to come join us. And if you are interested in any of these projects, come talk to Aya. So what, now we, I think we can take a couple questions. And uh, please be brave, ask, ask away. Okay. How many nodes do you have in your public cloud? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not authorized to talk something about that, sorry. Well, <laughs> it's business. It's business. <laughs> 17 data centers. <laughs> Physical data centers. But it's a large system, yeah. Uh, we use Juno. Yeah, Juno. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in, in fact, we just uh, uh, deployed uh, our public cloud based on Fusion Sphere 5.1 version. So this is a product version from Huawei, and it's based on Juno release. Okay, so we, uh, in fact, we improve the uh, upstream code. For example, we fix bugs, we improve reliability, and so on. Yeah. How often do you pull and update from the trunk? Uh, that's a good question. So. Uh, in general, the uh, uh, Huawei Public Cloud is maintained in a CICD mode. Yeah, so we sync with upstream frequently because of public cloud, right? Uh, any, how frequent is that? Is it like uh, order it, of it, months? It depends, it depends. Okay. No period. That's neat. All right, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Can follow a <coughs> expand the uh, cloud services uh, in the United States or to the, to the United States. The, uh, the reason why I'm asking <laughs> is the U.S. government prohibited Huawei to sell routers and many other network hardware in the United States. Okay. And I wonder you can provide services in the United States. Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, the reason we're doing a public cloud um, 
in China is because we are actually helping out our carrier customers to enable their public clouds. So it is not our ambition to become a global public cloud service provider. Right. So that's why we are only selling in China market. Right. So we can get the experience, we can become a true expert and help out our um, carrier customers. However, if you are interested, we have partners all over the world, and carrier partners all over the world, and we can definitely you know, have our carrier customers service you if there's a need in that market. Any more questions? No more questions? Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.